Friction is one of those forces that people often struggle with because it has some unusual qualities about it. Friction first needs to exist alongside another force. Friction only exists if there's something else that friction is fighting against. If there's an object that's trying to slide down an incline, then the friction will be there because of the force of gravity that's pushing the object down the incline. So friction is always present when it's opposing another force. It's always going the opposite direction of another force. The formula for friction, the general formula, is that the frictional force equals the normal force times mu. And mu is your frictional coefficient. It can be static or kinetic friction. And this is often a stumbling point for students because static and kinetic can sometimes be a bit misleading in terms of what they are. So the common example provided is a car. Because the car is moving, people are tempted to think that it must be kinetic friction because there is movement of the system. But it's actually static friction, and so I think we should spend a moment going over what that distinction means. Static friction basically means that there is no slipping or sliding of the object along the surface. So for example, with a car, at the point where the tire meets the road, there is no slipping. The tire isn't slipping, but instead it's very rigid at that point in the system. Notice that also the wheel is going to be rotating in a clockwise direction, and so at this point there, the wheel is going to be moving to the backwards direction versus the car, and so therefore friction must be moving forward in order to oppose the other movement, which is the force that the uh, car engine and the axle are putting on the wheel to turn in a clockwise direction. So the bottom line is when you see a question about whether it's static or kinetic, you need to be asking, is something slipping? Is it, you know, is it moving along, uh, is it an ice skate moving along an ice rink? Or is it something that's kind of gliding along a surface, something that's sort of sliding along a table? If not, then it's static friction. And static friction and kinetic friction have the same formula, but there's one distinction you need to be aware of. And that distinction is that if it's static, it can be up to the normal force times mu, normal force times the frictional coefficient. Because static friction only exists as much as it needs to. If it doesn't need to be normal force times the entire frictional coefficient, then it won't do that. It will be less than that amount. But kinetic friction, because the thing is slipping on the other object or it's sliding along an another surface, that will always be equal to the normal force times mu. So be aware that it's the system, and in this point with the car, the system is the rubber and the road. And so there's no slippage or no sliding along that. It's a very rigid, stable thing when the tires meet the road. And so that, therefore, is static friction. Be aware of that distinction. Even though the entire system of the car is moving, the system where the friction becomes relevant, which is the road and the tire, there is no slippage along that. And so you don't need to be thinking about that. And uh, the other thing to be aware of is that static friction doesn't always exactly equal normal force times mu because it doesn't need to a lot of the time. It needs to exist just enough to oppose whatever force is there and it will have fulfilled its purpose as a frictional force. And so be aware that, that slipping and sliding are necessary for, for, static, for kinetic friction. And be aware that static is not always going to be equal to this formula, but it can be up to that formula. And I think you should be good on any friction question after that.